Hello everybody and welcome back to another weekly replay with me Hijack and today I am giving you the third in a series of three on my road to tier 10 and this is the tier 10 Swedish Heavy, the Crown Van. Now the Crown Van, like the ML1 and the ML2, has a three shot auto loader and a very steeply angled front plate on the turret making it great for going hull down on uh, ridges and whatever. Yeah, it's got great gun depression and it's got decent amount of speed. The aim time on it compared to the ML1 and the ML2 is it's about fair. It's slightly faster than the ML2, but way faster than the ML1. So if you are playing the Swedish Heavy line, this is the pinnacle of the line. This is the top of the tree. And uh, personally, I prefer this one over the ML2, even though the ML2 was a lot of fun to play. Um, compared to the ML1, though, this is terrible, tier for tier. Um, it has great alpha. It has great uh, penetration. Um, the turret rotation isn't bad. And it doesn't have the greatest camo. But in the end, it is a decent tier 10 tank. And it is going to definitely stay in my garage. And it'd be one I play on a regular basis. Now we're here on the map Studzianki, and I've gone over to these little bushes here at D4, which is going to allow me to get some nice shots down to the south and help our south flank against all the tanks hiding in the trees. Now I'm keeping my eye on the A56 hill, as well as the uh, factories, the ruined factory over at uh, C6, C7, just to see where those tanks are and keep me making sure that there's nothing along the back ridge line over in the 8th lane. A couple of good shots there on the 430U. I got one shot penetrating, one tracking shot. I take the third shot and it penetrates as good as well. Average damage on this tank is about 440 damage, but I was a bit of a low roll there. A couple of things if, if you're new to the game that uh, I, I, I can recommend is I whenever I track a tank, I always click the, I guess it's R for me on the keyboard which um, signals to my allies to shoot this target because I've tracked them. And it's a good way to kind of let everybody know that you've tracked a tank, it's stationary, he's in the open, and you can shoot him. So there, I took a shot on the T20, or sorry, the Fosh B, two shots on the Fosh B, and a third shot tracks for snow damage, again, requesting fire on the Fosh B, and I'm going for the reload. Now the reload on this tank, like I said, it's about 20, 23 seconds for the entire clip, which isn't bad, it's decent. Um, I have just unlocked the Bat Chat 25 TAP, the tier 9 medium tank with a 6 shot autoloader, and it takes almost 40 seconds to reload the entire clip on that thing. That's a long time to be sitting on a batch. The 20 something seconds on this one isn't bad. The accuracy is decent as well. I haven't really had as much accuracy problems as I had in the ML1951 or the ML1. But you have to, of course, aim at targets. So there's a third shot there on the uh, T57 Heavy, which takes him down 458 damage. Once I finally actually aimed and hit his... Yeah. So I've decided that the south push is looking pretty dire at this point and it's time for me to kind of get into a better position to shoot. So I'm going to move to the ridge line where the FV215B183 is sitting. And I make a pretty bonehead noob mistake coming up right at this point here. As I'm crossing this threshold between the bushes and the hill, I happen to spot the AMX50B right here. And I happen to stop because I've got a nice side shot on him and I put a shot into him and kill him. Take a shot from him in return, and then the Jagdpanzer E100 hits me in the back of the tank for 1,109 points of damage, taking basically two-thirds of my hit points away in one hit. Uh, that's going to be hit points that I'm going to want back, because, you know, that puts me on basically as a one-shot for somebody who high rolls right now anywhere in the game. So these bushes here are now going to become my home for the next little while as I'm going to sit here hauled down, hidden in the trees, hoping that I can get myself some good shots and to stay alive. I can't see a silhouette on those tanks through the tr buildings, which is unfortunate, but we'll see what we can do with Artie and whatnot. I So that, uh, what was that? That was the Progetto 65 died. Oh, there's a Grill 15. I take a snapshot on him, but 
no silhouette when I shot, so he obviously was way behind cover at that point. So the game's pretty close at this point. We're about five minutes in, and the match is four to five. Now I've got one shell in the clip. This is where you need to think about your ammo when you're in the game with an auto loader or an auto reloader. It's like, do I take the last shot? Do I reload my gun? Because often what'll happen is you think about, okay, I'm gonna reload my shot, reload my gun. And then you hit the reload and then all of a sudden there's a target that it presents himself. And you can't do anything about it because you're stuck on a reload for 20 odd seconds and he's either gonna be dead or he's gonna go into cover again and you won't be able to get your shot. So you can see there, I did hold my shot in the clip for about 10, 15 seconds. And once that visible tank disappeared, I decided it was time to dab the C key and go for the reload on the clip. Now the south push is pretty much where it's going to be. I, I've, I've pinged the map to let everybody know that the south push is there and uh, I called SOS hoping that maybe some of those three heavies in the north would come down and help or the Leopard 1, but they're all kind of tied up dealing with the Egg Panzer E100, the T-125 and the FE-215B 183. And it was kind of annoying when I was playing this match because it felt like me and the 140 were the only ones really interested in the south at this point. And everybody else is going to sit around in the factory shooting guys. And I'll keep turning my turret, as you see, towards the north, hoping that when I the T-125 gets spotted or something, that I'll get a silhouette on him and he will possibly align, align himself in for a shot from me from the middle. But... I don't believe that's going to be the case for the entire rest of the match. So we're now at 5-5, uh, five, five, so it's tied. And there's only 8 minutes left in the match. And this is kind of where it gets a little bit boring, this match. We were camping. We were sitting around. I, I'm looking for an, a silhouette on that, or an outline on that Yag Pisa E100. But he dies anyway, so it's no big deal. He's gone. So it's now 6-6 six, because six, we lost a Super Conqueror, I believe. And now we're just going to be in a holding pattern because nobody wants to really make a move at this point and throw the match. And this is kind of where the Tier 10 matches are, I find. While it is slow, you'll find the higher caliber players in them because of this fact. We're going to be waiting for somebody to make a mistake and then you'll pounce on them for that mistake so we'll have to wait and see how this plays out here so i'm going to reposition here i was thinking about moving up towards the north position and i thought you know what there's four three tanks that were last spotted down in the south i don't want to leave the 140 by himself so i'm going to go back to where i was <laughs> even though i just thought of moving and hold my position, hoping that, again, somebody will make a mistake. There's some chatter going on in the channel. Just, you know, people saying camping is what wins this game and this patch. And you can see that I'm sitting a fair distance back from the bush. Now, as you might not know, or you might know, if you do know, just ignore what I'm going to say because it's complete utter trash. But sitting back like this prevents my tank from being spotted when I fire my gun. When you zoom in, if you can see through the bush, like you can't see the bush, it's transparent. That means you're too close, and you can you will be spotted when you get sh when you shoot. So if you st keep the bush solid when you're behind it, when you go into the sniper mode, then that means that you won't get spotted when you fire the gun. You're about 15 feet away or 15 meters away or whatever it is. So I'm just looking around, seeing where everybody's going and what everybody's doing, and. They're saying the F1, the FE215B is still in the same position, so the Leopard 1's hoping Artie will splash it. Artie's saying affirmative. And we're just going to be holding. It's been two minutes now since anybody's been moving, and we're just going to hold. I'm at uh, 2942 damage, which is not bad for this tank. I average about 3k on good matches, and less than that on really shitty matches, but we'll see how it goes. This was, I believe, my third match in the tank after I bought it. And after this match, I totally fell in love with it. Actually, after the very first match, I was like, this is a great tank. I really, really like it. Um, 
the ML2 was really good as well, but this one I think takes the cake, as I said earlier in the match. So there we go. There's the mistake that we just had happen. The T57 gets spotted. I get spotted from him, so I'm going to fall back behind the ridge line so I'm protected. Always worrying about Artie. I'm going to move in, see if I can't get a better sh better sh shot or better position on him where I'm not lit anymore. 140 was the one who spotted that T57 heavy. I'm thinking about the other T57 heavy, but he dies to the Conqueror gun carriage. And the Object 140 is going to go ahead and push in. We've got 4 minutes and 40 seconds remaining in this match, so... A lot of things are going to happen in those last four minutes, so just bear with me. I'll try to keep up everything as I go. So the Grill A15 gets spotted over in the north. I turn my turret. He goes dark, and then I'm being stupid. There's the T57 Heavy. Auto-aim for the win. Take him out for 308 damage. Object 140 gives me a nice congratulatory affirmative, and I give him one back. You know, a little high five saying, hey, good job. You kept me alive. Unfortunately, that was a little bit premature as the 140 gets taken out by the enemy GWE-100 artillery. But we now know where he is. He's over in K-0. So, South Bush is now complete. We've now won the South, aside from Artie, and everybody seems to be focused in the North. I'm hoping to get a nice silhouette on the Grill A-15 from this position, but he's behind all the rubble. And I'm going to quickly realize that this position will not help my team at all get shots to help them from the north. So I'm going to hang around a little bit. You can see the, the bushes that are now transparent or translucent, which means that I might get spotted by shooting. Still have two shells in my clip. And uh, any minute now, I'm going to decide to push further in the south because you can get around the J7A lanes and get nice shots up to the north in the village or in the factory up there so the enemy has two tds two heavies and three artillery left now one heavy is a super conqueror who has not been spotted yet this match and that will be a very important factor towards the end of this battle so leopard one in chat says we are going to lose and i say no we're not we're up by one tank there's two minutes two minutes 40 seconds 50 seconds left we're going to win. I'm confident that we're going to win or we're going to get a draw, which is a loss for both sides instead of just a loss for us, which is what I'm trying to I'm trying to make a point. Loss is draw. So, we got two and a half minutes remaining. It's 8 to 7. We're up by oh, now 9 to 7 because the GWE 100 was destroyed by our T92 and the Leopard 1 destroys the object 261. So now they've got, so really quickly, we went from 8.7 to 10.7. So now we've got a three tank advantage. Their FE215B is respotted in the north by the Leopard 1. Artie's aiming for him. They got, if we can take him out, that'll make a huge, huge gun out of the game for us. And there we go. The GWE100 takes out the FE215B183. Two minutes remaining. We get the warning bell. Two heavies, one TD. And one artillery left. Now I'm pushing my way through the south using the buildings as cover, hoping to get to a nice shooting lane for the north, because I know they're there. The uh, T110E5 and the Grillet 15 get spotted. I saw a brief silhouette there, so I'm stopping to try and see if I can aim in. I get nothing, so it's time to keep moving. Because if I go a little bit further up, I should be able to get decent lanes on the north. There's the Grillet 15. I aim in, aim in, aim in, and yeah, he pulls behind cover knowing somehow that I was aiming at him, which is really shitty, because I could have done a decent amount of damage to him. So, push forward some more. And I spot their last artillery, the T-92. And I'm going to put one shot into him, take him down to almost nothing, and take the second shot in my clip and take him out. In the meantime, we still have three enemy tanks left. One minute remaining. This is going to be a close one. I got silhouettes now on the T110E5, I get spotted. I'm like, uh oh, that's not good, but let's not pay attention to it because we've got 50 seconds remaining. T the Grillet 15 gets taken out by Artie. The T110E5 is pushing into the Fosh B and our T110E5, and I happen to spot the Super Conqueror sitting back here in the bush. And I take a shot and bounce, and I notice at this point that he's not moving at all. He didn't move his turret, and he didn't do anything, so I put my last two shots right into his lower plate, realizing that. He's either disconnected or he's AFK. 27 seconds remaining. I'm on the reload. Artie takes a splash on him. 
I was thinking about shooting him in the side, but I decided that I might as well go right for the back where it's easier. Artie splashes him. I take splash damage. I'm stunned, so I repair. And 10 seconds remaining. Clipped reloaded one. Two. And Artie takes him out for three. And we win the match with seven seconds left. So in the end of that match, I ended up with high caliber with 5,561 damage and 3 kills, which makes me the highest damage or highest tank for damage on the entire game. It was my Master Badge 2nd Class, Fire for Effect Bruiser, and it was my 3rd match in the Cranvan, giving me a 66.67%. So I did 2 wins and 1 loss, and since then it hasn't been quite so good, but hey, that was probably one of my favorite matches, and it also completed HT15 Tempered Steel. Hope you guys enjoyed watching this uh, third part of my Road to Tier 10 series. I hope to do more of them in the future if I ever get a chance to. And uh, don't forget to subscribe and tune in next week for another replay. Thanks and have a great day.